Hey, all right, so this is going to be an introduction to the Mathematica programming environment. It's a very, very quick start, so nothing too fancy. When you first open Mathematica, you're going to see a splash screen like this with this big red button that says New Document. We're going to click that button, and that's going to create a Mathematica notebook. So that's this big white space here. This is where we're going to put our code. So inside of the Mathematica system, you create and edit documents that are called notebooks. Notebooks contain code inside of things that we call cells. This is equivalent to a paragraph of text or something like that. In order to put a cell into the Mathematica notebook, you're going to hover your mouse until your cursor becomes a little horizontal line like that. So if you look over here as the mouse is hovering, and then you click and you just start typing. So let's click and start typing 2 plus 2. By doing that, we've created a cell. This little square bracket over here is called a cell bracket. So this tells you that there's a unit of code sitting inside of the notebook. Let's hover our mouse right underneath that, click, and type 3 plus 3. Great. You'll notice that there's now two cells. So there's two cell brackets over here, which lets you know that there's two independent pieces of code inside of this notebook. I'm going to talk about running that code in a moment, but first we're going to insert a cell and delete a cell. So we're going to take our mouse and we're going to hover it in between these two cells right here until it becomes the cell insertion cursor. We're going to click and type 4 plus 4. So we've inserted a third cell. At some point, your Mathematica notebook is going to have content that you want to get rid of. In order to do that, click this cell bracket. Perfect. Hit the delete key, and that goes away. So you can always click on cell brackets and delete them. You can also copy and paste them into other notebooks and do all sorts of other things that we won't cover right now. It's important that you know that you can delete them. So now that we've put code into our Mathematica notebook, we're going to evaluate that code by clicking inside of a cell, anywhere that has code, and we're going to shift enter in order to evaluate the cell. So we click inside of there, hold the shift key, press enter, and we get back the result. Let's come up here and evaluate this cell now. We click inside of it, shift enter, and we get back the result. Notice that the cell brackets have changed. There's now input and output cell brackets. We won't worry about that. You can click on any of those and delete those at any moment that you want. What is important is this extra bit of information. So this has a number one next to it. Notice that this is in and out number one. And up here, we have in and out number two. So the Mathematica notebook doesn't run code from top to bottom. It lets you stop at any place that you want and run code as an independent unit and get back the result. These numbers, this 1 and this 2, tell you the order in which the code was run. So this is really important because the Wolfram language kernel that's sitting behind it doesn't care about what's sitting in the notebook. It only cares about what you send to it by shift entering. So this is very convenient for doing prototyping and rapid changes to your code. But you should be very aware that when you wake up in the morning and you relaunch your notebook, you'll want your code to run from top to bottom in a nice, coherent fashion. So be very aware of this. So now it's your chance to create a Mathematica notebook, insert some cells, do some basic math. I'll come back in a moment. And we'll talk about more advanced Wolfram language programming. All right, great. So I hope that you created a Mathematica notebook and input some basic math. Now we're going to talk about the Wolfram language. And I'm going to start a bit abstract, and then we're going to get to a simple, concrete example. So everything inside of the Wolfram language has the form of a capitalized word with a square bracket, some arguments separated by commas, maybe there's lots of those, and then a closing square bracket. So a capitalized word that tells you something like plus or integrate or whatever it is that the function needs to do, a square bracket that contains some arguments that are comma separated, and then a closing square bracket. So a specific example is the function plus, which adds numbers. So if we take plus 3 comma 3, 
and close our square bracket, this is a valid piece of Wolfram language code that tells us that we're going to add these two numbers. So let's run it in Mathematica and see what it does. Let's scroll up our notebook. We're going to hover our mouse so that it becomes horizontal. We're going to click and start typing. Plus, we see it autocomplete, square bracket, 3 comma 3 square bracket. And now if we run this piece of code by clicking inside the cell and shift entering, we're going to get back the result that we expect, which is 6. So I'm going to quickly remind you that to run code inside of Mathematica, you need to shift enter when you're clicked inside of the cell. So this might not look like the fanciest code, but I'm going to tell you a secret right now, which is the argument of a function can itself be another function. So I'm going to take the function plus, and I have my comma 3 over here, and I'm going to add something here. It was a 3, and now I'm going to do another plus of 2 comma 2 as my first argument to this plus. So now this is a nested piece of Wolfram language code, and it was going to give us the result of 2 plus 2, which is 4, plus 3, which is 7. So let's scroll up our notebook, and we're going to hover our mouse, click, and start typing this function. I'm going to stand here while this happens so you can focus. All right, so now we have a complex piece of Wolfram language code. If we click in there and shift enter, we get back the result that we expect. So you may not trust me yet, but you will come to see that if you can understand this piece of code, you can understand the entire Wolfram language. So you should modify this and play with writing nested mathematical expressions. Some other things that you can do are times, and divide, and power, and see if you can guess some other Wolfram language mathematical functions. Play with that for a while. I'll come back, and I'll show you how to discover all sorts of other functions. All right, hey. Oh, no, what happened to all of our code? That's right, don't panic. We're about to find all sorts of Wolfram language functions. We're going to do that using the built-in documentation. So we're going to go to the Help menu, and then Wolfram Documentation. And when you click on that, that's going to pop open the Wolfram Documentation Center, which is where you can discover all sorts of Wolfram language functions. So these boxes that you see here allow you to discover functions by topic. If you click on any of those, it's going to give you a list of subtopics inside of that domain. We're not going to use that right now, but when you have a chance to go explore the language, you can use this to discover things that you find interesting. Right now, we're going to come up and demonstrate how to use the search box to find things that you're looking for. So we're going to start by typing plotting functions. Because let's say we're in a math class and we want to figure out how to make the plot of sign. So once we ran plotting functions and hit the Enter key, we get back a list of search results. So these are relevant functions that the system thinks we might be looking for. So you can see that there's plot, and there's density plot, and there's some more complicated things like plot 3D, which is going to give you a really pretty three-dimensional plot. Let's just start with the basic plot. We click on that in order to open up the plot documentation page, which is going to explain to us some basic overview of how the function can be entered into the Wolfram language. Right now, when you're learning how to code, this isn't the most useful thing. So we're going to scroll this notebook up. And we're going to see that we pass through these details and options. This is where you find information about the back end of what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, this isn't also very useful when you're first learning how to code. The best place to start is down here in the basic examples. So let's scroll up. And we're going to change the zoom on this notebook using this nice little magnification feature down here. So we're going to take it to 200 so that we can see the code a little bit better. And this is great. So Mathematica documentation that's built in is an editable notebook, but you can't save any of your changes. So when you come to a piece of code like this, 
if you want to understand how to modify this function, let's take sine of x and turn it into sine of 3 times x. And then we're going to run that piece of code by shift entering. And we'll notice that when we do that, the frequency of our function is now higher. So Mathematica documentation is editable. You can come in here, you can break things, you can do crazy things. If at some point you want to save some work that you did, you need to copy your work out of the documentation and put it into your own notebook. So let's go ahead and click and drag to select this code. We're going to copy it using whichever keyboard shortcut you have on your operating system. And then we're going to go back over into our own document, into this notebook. We're going to click as if we're going to insert a cell and then just paste. And when you paste, it writes that into the Mathematica notebook. You can now click and shift enter to run this code inside of this notebook and you get back the result and you can save this file and do any work that you want to inside of this file based on what you found in the documentation center. So this is the number one way to find Wolfram language stuff is you're going to go to the help menu inside of Mathematica and then there's the Wolfram documentation. So your job now is to go into Mathematica, go into the Wolfram documentation, and find something interesting. Just go explore, have some fun, break everything inside the documentation center. If you find anything that you want to keep, pop it out, copy it, save it into your own notebook, and then we'll come back later and talk about some more details. All right.